We should point out that Crown Hill Cemetery, the state's largest cemetery, and it has a section called the Heroes of Public Safety section, which was created back in 2002 following 9-11. In that section, uh, for folks that serve in law enforcement or even public service, firefighters as well, as well that die in, uh, in du on duty, they're able to get their burial costs and their funeral costs all for free. This is a solemn place for those folks that are there um, at, at Crown Hill on the city's north side. We will see many images emerge in a matter of hours. Our Mark Mullins is live right now on the city's north side. There at Crown Hill, Mark, what are you seeing and, and what are you feeling there as this funeral procession gets underway? Raphael and Nicole, good afternoon. What we're seeing is uh, the unit uh, of Trooper Aaron Smith, his Indiana State Police brethren, uh, arriving in their police cruisers here to Crown Hill Cemetery. They are slowly making their way in, parking their cruisers, and then will file to this area where the ceremony will take place. This part, the part at Crown Hill Cemetery, is the emotional and solemn part of the day. This is a place that is steeped full of tradition as we've seen uh, so many officers who have been killed in the line of duty laid to rest here. This will be the final resting place. This will be where it all ends. The uh, family will arrive uh, along with a uh, his widow, uh, his parents, uh, brothers and sisters, his grandparents, and uh, we're expecting more than 500 cruisers to arrive here. Of course, the coach will arrive uh, soon after the rest of his Indiana State Police uh, uh, troopers that he worked with arrive here as well. Uh, I want to step out of the way and show you um, the, the, where this will be taking place. This is the Heroes of Public Safety um, area. Um, you can see the green chairs there, the wreaths that are, are set up there, and the spot where uh, Trooper Smith's casket will be laid. Uh, the coach will arrive through the gates, and as I mentioned, there is plenty of tradition that is uh, steeped in this as part of the ceremony. The coach arrives through the gates, the pallbearers, we understand. There will be six that will remove Trooper Smith's casket from the coach, and we understand the Indiana National Guard will be very much a part of this ceremony. Three Indiana National Guard members and three Indiana State Police troopers will serve as pallbearers removing his casket uh, from the uh, coach. Trooper Smith's final resting place will be in the Heroes of Public Safety section of Crown Hill Cemetery and as you know as we've uh, covered uh, Raphael and Nicole that uh, we've been here way too many times as we've seen a number of law enforcement officers um, killed in the line of duty and given the proper respect that they're laid to rest. Noah Shanavez, Sierra Burton, Master Trooper James Bailey, just to name three in the last year. Once Trooper Smith's coach arrives, all military honors will happen here. Raphael, Nicole. Our Mark Mullins there at Crown Hill Cemetery live images again. This is the Heroes of Public Safety Memorial. This is where the funeral will, of course, continue, where he will be laid to rest when the casket uh, arrives at that location. As we continue our coverage on this Friday, we are honoring Aaron Smith, a man who loved his family, a man of faith, a man who served his neighbors, a man who was dedicated at the end of the day to doing good. And right now we are taking a live look and you can see that funeral coach right there inside the gates at Crown Hill Cemetery. You can see those officers standing by waiting for the next part of this funeral to begin. As Mark mentioned, he will receive police and military honors as Trooper Smith served as both an Indiana State Trooper and a Sergeant in the Indiana National Guard. Now we will be watching as this all unfolds. There will be some movements that we'll be watching for as those officers are waiting and staged to take Trooper Smith. They will be on each side of that funeral coach. They will place their hand on the side of that funeral coach and directly in front of that there will be a riderless horse which symbolizes a fallen hero and again, they will eventually make their way to the Heroes of Public Safety section, which will be the final resting place. It's the final resting place for many Hoosier heroes, both in public safety and the armed forces. Once the funeral was complete, that ceremony there at Emmanuel Church in Greenwood, the procession then took, of course, headed to Whiteland High School, where we saw that where Aaron Smith graduated back in 2008. And then it also, as you will see from video here, there was the end of watch call, his final call, what we call the 1042. Uh, that before the 1042, of course, the, the casket and the officers also 
went under this garrison flag nearby Whiteland High School where he attended school, where he gradu graduated from, received his diploma where he played um, football, number 29 as a linebacker, was also on the wrestling team, a very proud Whiteland warrior as we heard from Pastor Johnson refer to him. He was a warrior not only as an athlete, not only a warrior, not only as a, as a husband, but also a warrior on the streets of Indiana serving the community that he served. That was the garrison flag the first of two that uh, played out, of course, throughout the afternoon. They went under that area around 2 o'clock this afternoon. Just 33 years old, a Franklin, Indiana native. He lived a life of dedication, service to his family, friends, community, state, and country. You can see people lining the streets there just to pay their respect, to show that they appreciate the sacrifice that he made for Hoosiers and his family is seeing that. His fellow brothers in blue have seen the community come out today, Hoosiers, just to show their appreciation and their, their thank you to a man who gave it all. He protected Hoosiers, a man of service who loved his community, and we've heard it over and over again. He leaves behind a legacy of selflessness and service, a model of commitment and toughness. As the governor said, he's one of us. He's one of us. Here's that end of watch, here's the end of watch call, the final call, the 1042 as the casket, the hearse, as the hearse arrived there near Whiteland High School. On June 28, 2023, at 2038, Trooper Aaron Smith answers his final call. By assisting with the vehicle pursuit, Trooper Aaron Smith attempted to de-escalate the situation by placing stop six that was struck outside of his commission by the target vehicle. Aaron Smith honorably served citizens of Indiana with Indiana State Police for five years and with Indiana Army National Guard for 12 years careers he took to heart. Aaron was always willing to help those in need with a smile on his face. It has been an honor to have dispatched and to have known Trooper Aaron Smith. Aaron Smith was a loving husband, son, grandson, brother, and friend. Trooper Aaron Smith will be missed and forever remembered. 52361 is 1042 for the final time. This is a key moment of the ceremony because that marks his final call. That means his number is retired. He's no longer on duty. It's also key what happened there at Whiteland High School where he graduated from back in 08 because he went into the National Guard, Nicole, because his high school buddy, Jim Waters, died in Afghanistan in 2011. So mm -hmm. in honor of his buddy, Jim Waters, he joined the Guard, which he served for more than 10 years, not only to help pay for school, not only to serve his state and country, but also to honor a buddy of his. And uh, he was someone that only loved his country and state, as we heard from the Adjutant General, but he also loved Franklin and Greenwood and Bargersville and all the points in between which he served while he was on patrol. We want to give you another live look there at Crown Hill Cemetery on the city's northwest side. This is a view from our WRTV Skycam. You can see still no movement here. Everybody is standing by waiting for the next steps as as the funeral service continues and he makes his way eventually to the heroes of public safety section. But you can see we have that perfect view right there from the drone. His boss, State Police Superintendent Doug Carter, um, was at a public gathering on Monday mm. in Franklin where the city of Franklin honored yeah. Aaron Smith. And he at that rally, because the people rallied for state police, uh -huh. he thanked that community. He right. also thanked again the community of Franklin during the funeral services. These are the words today from Doug Carter. Megan and the entire family, as the page is turned in this chapter of Aaron's life, you are all, all owed a debt of sincere gratitude for sharing him with us. There have now been 49 members of the Indiana State Police that have died or been killed in the line of duty. The surviving family members of those that remain are the only ones who truly understand your grief. As time goes by, please lean on them. They will be here for you always, and they can help you along the way. Many of them are even here today. May you all find solace in knowing that Aaron has now found and is experiencing eternal rest in the presence of God. He will watch over you and be with you in ways that we cannot humanly understand. May we all continue to perpetuate our memories of Aaron until our final day when we see him again. 
an emotional moment there for Superintendent D Doug Carter, who also went on to say that he loves his people and that he loves the way that they just step up every time they get the call. He also noted, Nicole, that Aaron Smith is the 49th state mm -hmm. police trooper mm -hmm. in state history to have died in the line of duty. Uh, and he noted that today during the funeral services. As we continue our live coverage this afternoon here on WRTV, we're bringing you these live images from the city's north side here in Indianapolis. Those are images of the casket there at Crown Hill Cemetery. One thing that stood out to me from Superintendent Carter was when he talked to Aaron's wife at the hospital and she said, I know where he's at. She said that they're a family of faith and he even said that he won't want to come back because he's with God. And they talked about that a lot, how their family was comforting the fellow troopers who were there instead of them comforting the family. So I was in Franklin, I was the MC of the event and I had a chance to speak to Mrs. Smith. She came up to me wow. and um, you know, sometimes when you when we cover these stories, we were seeing these images, yeah. you just wonder where people get their strength. I know. And they become the, the face of courage, and she was so dignified. But she wanted to be there in Franklin on the 4th of July, mm. on the 3rd of July, yeah. celebrating the 4th, because she wanted to thank the people in the crowd for supporting her and her husband. The same thing for Gary Smith, um, Aaron's dad. He was also there in Franklin on Monday. Also, I, I could not understand why they were just not broken and right. in tears and they may be feeling broken and yeah. they may have the moments when they break down and are in tears but when they're out in public they want you to know those of you who are listening to my voice and those of you who are seeing them in public that they appreciate you that they thank you because you are their strength and they know that they will need you in the days to come as we heard from the reverend there will be waves of emotions there will be times when they will need more of you to stand by their side at this moment these sights these scenes these sounds the things that are really holding up this family because it is just some dark days that this young man at 33 years old did not come home after his shift last Wednesday. And we want to bring you some more sound from today's funeral service with Pastor Johnson. Let's listen in. It's fitting that the Whiteland High School mascot is a warrior. For today, for Trooper Aaron Smith, it's perfect. It's perfect because a warrior is someone who goes to battle. It's someone who puts their foot on the line, ready to risk anything and everything for what he or she believes is important. It's someone who shows up. Someone who's willing to do the work that no one else will do. Someone who is willing to fight tooth and nail for a cause, an idea, or the people in their lives with unmatched ferocity and intensity. A warrior fights. And a warrior fights with strength and with honor. Let's talk about honor. For a warrior, not only do they fight with honor, but they live an honorable life. They are men and women of conviction, integrity, and character. They are people like Aaron Smith. Not only did he live honorably, but he honored God by loving kids at this church so well. He would teach them biblical truth. He would help them understand how to make wise choices. He would teach them right from wrong. Pastor Johnson went on to uh, just note the strength of the marriage between Aaron and Megan Smith and also just their faith. They were very faithful, they are faithful, and he appreciated that in both that couple, a couple that got married in Minnesota. I'm told in front of Belgian horses, it was a beautiful ceremony. His brother Jeremy telling me that he was so proud to be the best man at that event. It's those things like the weddings and, and the, the little things you tell them, the, the Facebook messages you're sending them that they will appreciate because it's making this moment um, less painful. And you heard the pastor there mention that he worked with children. Him and his wife, Megan, served in the children's ministry at Emanuel Church Greenwood campus. And we're taking more live look at images from Crown Hill Cemetery. This is the Heroes of Public Safety section. This is where the family of Trooper Aaron Smith will make their way here shortly after the services at the beginning of Crown Hill Cemetery. As we stand by and wait, this is an iconic area in the Heroes of Public Safety section. It's located in the most historic area of the southern part of the cemetery. We want to go ahead and toss it out to my co-anchor Mark Mullins who is standing by waiting for the arrival. Mark, I can see a lot of folks have already made their way behind you at this hour. 
Yeah, a lot of those police cruisers are parked, Nicole, and the officers have made their way and are standing now in formation, as you can see there. The flags in the background here at the Heroes of Public Safety section are at half staff honoring Trooper Aaron Smith there. We're expecting hundreds more officers from Indiana State Police, the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department, the Marion County Sheriff's Office, and police departments around our viewing area beyond across the state, and some have even made the trip here to Indianapolis to honor Trooper Smith from around the country. When one brother falls, so many respond to pay their respects. I just want to give you a sense of what we're expecting to see here uh, at the cemetery and his final resting place. There will be a, a few remarks by the pastor uh, once everyone is in place and seated. Following that, uh, we will hear a bagpipe, bagpipes, which is a a tradition that uh, goes back steeped in tradition Irish influence here because when police departments were being formed here in our country uh, many Irishmen from the uh, potato famine in Ireland made their way to America and joined police departments bringing that tradition along with them and it is something that uh, continues today uh, when there is a fallen officer there'll be a 21 gun salute uh, that is a uh, going to be uh, happening after the bagpipes and then we're understanding that something different will happen at this ceremony that we haven't seen at others uh, taps will be played and usually taps is played by a single bugler it is the last call of the night for military installation when it's in war but it is also the last call for a veteran or police officer and because trooper aaron smith served five years with Indiana State Police and 12 years in the Indiana National Guard. Uh, the Indiana National Guard members and State Police uh, will each play a version of TAPS, but in a round. So one will start and another will start just a few moments later and together uh, they will play TAPS uh, in that round. The color guard will then uh, fold two flags for the family, uh, one from the Indiana National Guard and one from Indiana State Police. Uh, so the family will be receiving two flags. One of those flags is pre presented to Superintendent Doug Harder, who uh, heads up Indiana State Police. He will present that to the family. And then uh, we will see all of the officers who have shown up here wearing those carnations that we've told you about, the white carnation with the red dot, uh, the white carnation symbolizing the purity of those who choose to serve their community in law enforcement, the red dot symbolizing the blood shed when they're killed in the line of duty. Each officer will then remove that carnation from their uniform, pass by the casket with uh, Trooper Aaron Smith's body, and they will lay that flower on his casket as they pay their final respect. That is just a little bit of what we're expecting to happen here uh, in the next hour or so as we await the coach to arrive here. Nicole, Raphael, back to you. Our Mark Wellens there live at Crown Hill Cemetery. Faith was a key component of this young man's life, 33 years, and during his time in public service, he gave it his all. I first met him back on April the 2nd or the 3rd. Mm -hmm. Don't recall, it was after the, the tornadoes hit Whiteland, that EF3, and they were, he and his wife were passing out hot dogs uh, in, their, in his cruiser to the people in need. And then, a couple of weeks later, just a couple of weeks ago, when another tornado hits there in White River Township in the Greenwood area, uh, in the area where Lauren Casey's in-laws live, he just shows up. Mm -hmm. And that's the story we hear about this guy. So, you know, so, so often people expect the media or the superintendent or the governor to say nice things about someone. And yes, yeah. we will say nice things. <laughs> but the proof is in the pudding. Mm -hmm. This guy mm -hmm. lived his faith. And everywhere you go, people will tell you, yes, he showed up. He did good things. And so it is an amazing narrative because it is the real deal. And that's what Aaron Smith, when the governor says that this guy is one of us, he's a Hoosier who every morning got up and did the best that he could with what, with what he had. And in his way of doing things was through law enforcement, was to serve and to protect. And that's what Aaron Smith did every single day when he went to work. I love that. I love the stories you're sharing about the times you ran into him. I, last night I went through the stories we've done over the past week and some of the things I, I came across. His former coach said he was the type of person that every coach wanted on their team. We've learned he was a football player and a wrestler at Whiteland High School. Another message we heard, he was always looking after others and doing things that were good for the whole, not just good for him. So as you mentioned, out there helping clean up after the storm. And he's the kind of kid that if your daughter brought him home, you'd be happy. 
at just 33 years old. That's kind of cool. A great guy. But, but, but he was married, so, he right? Was, he was married, <laughs> but you know, that says. But you want someone like that, right? He was a good guy yeah. all around. Yeah. As a dad, you want, as a girl dad, you want your daughter to bring home <laughs> right. and Aaron Smith and, and be proud of that. His brothers last week, Nicole, I should point out, they're on a text, text thread. And last Thursday, they were sending each other a note that they love each other, realizing that their brother, Aaron, was not on that text thread. Mm. Um, Jeremy, his eldest brother, telling me that um, they're going to keep the cell phone thread alive and, and well. Wow. They hope that no one else buys that number. They're going to try to figure that out. Yeah. But they feel so connected, this band of brothers, four of them, Jeremy, Frank, Aaron, and Chad, they loved each other. And he, he, Jeremy wanted me to let you all know that it wasn't just like a regular bunch of guys that hung out. They hugged, they kissed, they said, I love you. And last week, when they sent out that threat, that cell text, it was really the first time that they noticed who had not responded. Wow. And so they're hoping to keep that phone number alive because they want to keep their, their, their brother in their heart. His father, Gary Smith, he, he's going to miss his, his son this fall. They watch football together. They love watching cops. Notre Dame fan? Uh, he was a Notre Dame right? fan. That's right, Notre okay. Dame fan. And uh, his dad just loved the fact that his son helped other people and always wanted to do the right thing. And so this is the kind of guy that we celebrate today. When we celebrate him, right, a lot of folks may say, as I mentioned before, we don't know him. Mm -hmm. But yes, you do. Because if you respect, if you love, if you, if you want to do good things, then you know this guy. There's this guy in your family somewhere. And it just happened that this guy, Aaron Smith, was serving his state, serving his department, trying to stop uh, police chase last week and of course died in line of duty. As we continue our live coverage here on WRTV, we continue to watch these images from Crown Hill where officers are preparing for the final stage of what has been a, a long, solemn day here in central Indiana. The governor, Eric Holcomb, spoke this, this morning as well. He gave a, a speech for about 15 minutes about the service that Aaron Smith gave his state. Here's the governor. And just last year, as you heard, I hope it wasn't glossed over on two separate occasions, less than a month apart, this guardian angel in blue appeared at the exact moment he was needed. I don't think that's coincidence. He saved both of their lives. And for that, as you heard, he was Decorated, of course, with two life-saving awards just a few months ago. He wasn't seeking that recognition. But even after it, the already makings of a legacy, he didn't consider himself a hero. In part because Megan and Aaron didn't define service as being on duty or in uniform. The governor also going on to say that we, he has earned our eternal gratitude of everything we have to give. The, mm -hmm. the governor expressing pride that he served the state so well. We continue our live coverage here on WRTV. Live images from Crown Hill Cemetery as we continue to honor the life of Indiana State Trooper Aaron Smith. Good afternoon to you. I'm Rafael Sanchez. And I'm Nicole Griffin. Trooper Aaron Smith was a graduate of Whiteland High School, just 33 years old, a Franklin, Indiana native who lived a life of dedication and service to his family and friends. And you had the chance to get to know him a little bit better through people that you've been talking to, his family. What else have you learned and been able to share about him? This is a guy that people just love because he just didn't just talk about stuff, Nicole. Mm -hmm. He just did it. And so often you hear so many people just like to flap their gums, you know? Right. But this is the kind of guy who did not want the notoriety, did not want the attention. As you heard, his wife, uh, he was very humble. His dad says he's very humble. His brother also says he's very humble. And so uh, the, 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 his point was to live out his faith. Mm. And so often people don't want to talk about faith because it can be controversial. Right. But one of his favorite quotes I have here on my notes, I don't know if you can see this or not, but he used to tell his brothers when they used to get into a dispute, and as you can imagine, if you have three other brothers, someone's <laughs> going to knock you on the oh, head, yeah. right? <laughs> so his favorite quote was, you got to let go and let God. Okay. I wrote that down because his brother wanted to make sure that you knew that as well, that when things got a little bit, you know, crazy mm -hmm. among the brothers, yeah. uh, when there was a dispute, he'd say, hey, slow it down because about God. 
Aaron Smith knew he wanted to be a police officer at the age of six. Six years six. old. In kindergarten, right? And all, all the things we need to learn. And he made it happen. And he made it happen. So his teacher, Lois Thompson, there in the Clark Pleasant School Corporation, I happen to know Lois Thompson because she worked with my wife. With your wife. That's right. And um, Lois Thompson wanted everyone to know that even at six years old, she knew that this young man had a caring, caring spirit. And he did an assignment in that kindergarten class, as most kindergarten kindergartners are asked, what do you want to do when you want to grow up? His dad, Gary, who happened to be a reserve officer with the Trafalgar Police Department, so he wrote in his letter, I want to be like my dad. I want to be like my dad. I want to be in law enforcement. That, the words of a six-year-old, and you know, out of the mouth of babes, great things happen, and here we see it, it uh, materialize. Uh, Trooper Aaron Smith living out his passion, living it out so well, and on a day like today, all these people coming together to say, you know what? You did good. Thank you for your you service. You did good. Yeah. And I think all of us at some point in our journey through this life want to at least be recognized that our time meant something. Mm -hmm. And at 33 years old, Aaron Smith, you did good. You did good. And this day is such a long day for the family, but I recently had the chance to talk to another fallen officer's family about going through a day like this. And they say, yes, it's very hard. It's very long. It's very emotional. But to see all of the support and to know that my loved one is not forgotten and is being honored for what they have done and what they've given to the community, that makes it worth it. And, it, and they describe the day as a beautiful day, actually. You know, as hard as it was and emotional, as emotional as it was to go through this entire day starting, you know, early in the morning, the funeral was 11, to now this still starting to begin at Crown Hill. We can see some movement here. It's a long day, but they appreciate the community's support. As you can see the casket now coming out there at Crown Hill, as you were saying, as we watch these images, um, there's a group called COPS, Concerns of mm -hmm. Police Officers. And let me tell you about COPS really quick. It's a mighty group of survivors. Mm. And this group based here in Indiana will embrace this family, Megan mm. and Gary and Frank and Aaron and Chad and Hope and mom Cindy and Patty will never be alone. They will never be alone. As we are now watching these images, we will stop talking as now the transfer of the casket from the hearse to the case on will begin. We're watching these live images on WRTV as we continue to honor the memory, the life and legacy of Trooper Aaron Smith.
watching live coverage as we continue to honor the life and legacy of Indiana State Police Trooper Aaron Smith. Moments ago, his casket put on the caisson, preparing to enter the Crown Hill Cemetery for what will be his last rest, will be his resting place in the Heroes of Public Safety section here at Crown Hill Cemetery in Indianapolis. A section that was built back in 2002, opened for the first time, the section created right after 9-11. One of the worst disasters in American history. This section was created and those that are in public service, whether it's a firefighter or a police officer who uh, died in the line of duty, can be buried in the section. Burial services and the costs are free. But more importantly, it is a place where the public, where the families can come and have a moment and we can all honor the sacrifices made by these hometown heroes. Trooper Smith will receive police and military honors as he did serve as both an Indiana State Trooper and a Sergeant in the Indiana National Guard. And as we showed you prior, officers who have been along this route all day long from the beginning of the funeral through the procession from Greenwood down to Indianapolis, they are waiting and standing by for the next part of this service at the Heroes of Public Safety section. As Raphael mentioned, this is one of the most historic areas in the southern part of the cemetery, so they do have a long walk to get back to that area. The Heroes of Public Safety Memorial marks the entrance to this section at Indiana's largest cemetery. We have two views for you here, one from our WRTV drone from up above of Crown Hill Cemetery and one there on the ground as our crews have been working hard today to honor the life of Trooper Aaron Smith and bring you the sights and sounds as Hoosiers say thank you to this hero who gave it all. And on this day, we learned so much more about the life of this state trooper, Aaron Smith, who also served in the National Guard. Governor Holcomb proclaiming that Aaron had earned our eternal gratitude and that he had all to give and we should give him all the grace and the respect necessary. His boss, State Police Superintendent Doug Carter, appreciated the care that he showed for others, that deep love for public service. Today, we remember the Whiteland High School warrior, the state police trooper, and the guy who did, with ordinary things, did extraordinary measures to make them better. These live pictures outside of Crown Hill Cemetery mark the life of Aaron Smith. He was a graduate of the 78th Indiana State Police Recruit Academy, a member of the Indiana State Police Alliance. Trooper Smith served the community as Indiana State Police Trooper for nearly five years and served in the Indiana National Guard since 2011, where he received the rank of sergeant. So he had a long, a lot of accomplishments in his short life, actually, just 33 years old. Received two special commendations for actions that he took in the saving the lives of people this past October and past November. The ceremony now getting underway, as you can see his hearse on the case, I will move about a moment. The ceremony now underway as we continue live coverage here on WRTV.
Here at Crown Hill Cemetery, we are listening as the bagpipers approach the Heroes of Public Safety section here at the cemetery. The uh, casket carrying Trooper Aaron Smith's body had been removed from the coach and put into the caisson, and the bagpipers and an escort are bringing his casket to this area. You're watching from above those bagpipers that you're hearing there, a, a deep tradition there that happens at uh, fallen officers who are being laid to rest. It dates back to the times when Irish immigrants came to America as police departments were being established in our country, a time when in Ireland the potato famine was going on. That tradition came with those Irish officers who were setting up police departments here, and that tradition carries on today. We want to give you a better vantage point as the bagpipers uh, make their way, as they wind up from the, wind from the gates at Crown Hill Cemetery to this section honoring those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for their communities.
casket there arriving at the Heroes of Public Section Memorial, where we'll be laid to rest. As you can see hundreds of police officers from across our state and our country here to honor Trooper Aaron Smith. And on a day like today, when we see these images throughout the day, the question is, Aaron Smith, a man of faith, a man of family, reminds all of us what are we doing in our own neighborhoods. Aaron decided that at the age of six, that at some point in his life, he wanted to serve his state and his country. So on a day like today, when we see these images, we're just asked, what can we do in our neighborhoods to help others, to serve others? That may be the best gift that we can give his widow, Megan, is doing something that is selfless, something that is good, something that makes Indiana better. Our coverage honoring Trooper Aaron Smith continues right here on WRTV as Nicole and Mark continue our coverage at 428. Nicole? You can see those officers standing by as the coverage at the gravesite continues here at Crown Hill Cemetery in the Heroes of Public Safety section. You can see all of the officers who have traveled from so far today to honor the life of Trooper Aaron Smith standing by waiting to show his family that they are here for them, that they are supporting them, and that they are thankful for his service. You can see as we zoom out on the casket, they're covered in the American flag, hundreds of officers standing, waiting for the next part of this service here at Crown Hill Cemetery. We are gonna listen in and watch as we honor the life of Trooper Aaron Smith.
so much for joining us today as we lay to rest Aaron Smith. Before we begin, I wanted to say to the National Guard, the Indiana State Troopers, any law enforcement that has supported this family on behalf of, of our church, truly thank you for all the support that you have lent to Megan and the rest of her family. Watching the level of love and care over the course of the past week has been nothing short of inspiring. The work that you do is profound, it is meaningful, and just watching it and watching the way that you love and care is truly a humbling thing to witness. So thank you for all that you have done. To the Smith family, what I would say today is, I know that it has been incredibly emotional I know it's been taxing, I know it has been draining. But what I want you to know is that in the coming days, in the coming weeks, the grief will hit you in different ways. But what I want you to know is that you are never alone. And I hope that what the past two days have shown you is that not only is God by your side every moment of every day, but this community this state, your family, this church, whatever we can do to love and support, we will do. I will not re-preach any message that has been delivered today. The words that have already been shared have been beautiful and they have been meaningful and heartfelt. I think those stand on their own. What I would love to do in the next few moments are three things. The first is I would like for all of us to have a moment of silence together where we can honor the beautiful life of Trooper Aaron Smith. And then following that moment of silence, I would love to share a passage from scripture. I would love to read Psalm 23, which I think offers us hope. I think it offers us encouragement, what we desperately need today. And then I would love for all of us, each and every single one of you that would like to join us, I would love to conclude in prayer today. So to begin, let us all engage and share in a moment of silence for Trooper Aaron Smith.
Psalm 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Aaron Smith truly is living in the house of the Lord forever. And on a day like today, where it is difficult emotionally, you can take solace in that. Will you join me in prayer? God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you and be still and silent in your presence. We thank you for the opportunity to clear any distractions from our minds so that we may focus on you and giving you glory and honor to your name. Father, you have blessed us with an incredible life. You have blessed us with Aaron Smith. You have blessed us with his service, with his love, with his sacrifice with it, the steadfast care that he has shown not only to his family, but to this, to this community, this state, and this country. His life surely was a blessing. You have given us an example to follow. The way that he lived, the way that he honored you, the way that he honored his community has inspired us all and help us to take the lessons from his life and help us to live them out each and every single day on our respective journeys towards you. God, even on days when it's hard, even on days when we do not understand, we still choose to place our faith and our hope and our trust in you. God, you are good. We acknowledge your goodness each and every single day. And I pray that you will comfort Megan and the rest of the Smith family. I pray that you encourage these men and women in law enforcement and the military that are joining us today to let them know that they are loved, and that they are valued and they are appreciated. God, we give you all the thanks and we give you all the glory. And we thank you for this incredible life that we lay to rest today. God, we love Aaron and we love you so much. It's in your name that we humbly pray and we all said, Amen. Thank you.
Lord! Our Lord! Our Lord!
a long emotional day of farewells, memory shared, smiles and tears is coming to a close for the family and friends of fallen Indiana State Trooper Aaron Smith and his law enforcement family. You're looking at live images right now at Crown Hill Cemetery where the graveside service for Trooper Aaron Smith is wrapping up at this hour.